What were my most worn summer pieces? Hi, if you're new here, my name is Jamie Lee and every season I do a little bit of a deep dive into the items that I wore the most and this is all backed on data as I track what I'm wearing on a daily basis. If you subscribe to my Substack, you probably already know the answers. However, I wanted to do this with a twist and also talk you through the little details that are what draw me in to these items to begin with. And if you are in the Southern Hemisphere like me, I'm going to link down to my Substack newsletter where I share with you my most worn items for autumn. So let's start with my most worn piece of knitwear. And that ended up being this Quince cotton linen cardigan. Now this is with a very small caveat that in Sydney where I live it is very hot over the summer. Most days are over 30 degrees and it's also quite humid and muggy so I'm not really reaching for something like this that much. So the things that I'm looking for in a piece like this is fabric composition first and foremost. It must be cotton or linen or a blend of the two. This particular one here is an organic cotton and linen blend and the other kind of beautiful thing about it is that it's not too tightly woven. So this is the gauge of the knit. So you can see the palm of your hand through the fabric which means that it is going to feel quite airy and breezy to wear. The other details that I like are that it's a cardigan so I can easily just drape it off one shoulder but also it is not covering my entire body like a sweater would. And then I also tend to opt for something that is in a really nice neutral color that will work back with everything else in my wardrobe and also something that kind of falls to about hip length. You'll see in the two examples that I shared, the buttons are in a little bit of a contrasting element. So you have this nice detail that the eye is drawn to when you first look at the knit as well. And I think that's another lovely little element, another lovely touch to keep an eye out for. Given Quince only ships within the US and my recent review, I will link up in the cards here. I am going to share with you some other alternatives down in the description box in case you want to go check everything out and all my sizing information, everything like that will be down there as well. And when it came to my most worn tops, it's probably zero surprise that it was a cotton tank and there were actually sort of three that were on my list. It was kind of every single cotton tank because I tend to rotate through them pretty heavily especially over the summer. On the more affordable end we've got H&M and I love their cotton rib tanks. I've got it in more than one colour. They come out of the wash feeling like new and they just hold up really well. I think that these are just as good if not better than their more expensive counterparts. Then we have this one here from Madewell which I like because the fabric is actually quite lightweight and thin. And then the final one that I have here is from Tibby and this one has a slightly unique neckline. It is almost like it's being pulled to the side and I like that little point of difference. It kind of makes it feel a little bit more like I'm expressing my own style. Now the things that I tend to look out for are again we're going to go back to fabric composition but cotton is number one for me and of course there is going to be a little bit of an element of stretch. So I tend to look for no more than 5% elastane. That's going to add this really nice soft and stretchy nature to the tank that'll feel really really comfortable and just kind of hug the contours of your body. The second thing that I'm looking for is that I want it to be in a ribbed texture because this is something that adds in that little element of visual interest into your outfits. Because when you're thinking about summer fabrications, a lot of them tend to look quite flat. So that's a great little element as well as I love it when the actual rib trim is really quite thick and bold because again it feels like a statement, it feels like this little finishing touch that elevates the piece. Then the final thing I'm looking for is necklines where they have committed. So I think that Tibby one is a really great example where they've really just gone all the way with that sort of slanted pulled over effect. But then when it comes to a racer, I want it to be a proper racer cut. I want it to be really nice and high or cut quite low. Or if it is somewhere in the middle, it needs to have one of those other elements in order for me to be drawn to it. Next most worn piece is a pair of trousers and these ones are from Sportscraft and I I think if you're still able to buy these, they may be included in the sale. They're a really lovely high-waisted straight leg pant in a cotton twill fabrication. They do run a little on the large side and I got the eight but I think it would have been better served with the six but I think they fit fine especially when you're belting them at the waist. Now the things that I noticed I was really drawn to my trousers over the summer was number one they have to be a high rise. This is an absolute non-negotiable for me and it's actually something I tend to look for in all of my skirts, trousers, shorts because I have a long torso. So if you have different proportions to me then this consideration may be completely different for you. The second thing that 
I'm looking for is I want the fit to be quite breezy. I don't want it to kind of cling to the body. When it is already really hot and sticky, that's sort of the last thing that you want. Personally, I find that really uncomfortable, especially when it comes to the end of the day and you're trying to peel the clothing off your skin. It's just a no for me. The third thing is that I like it when the trouser is full length. Again, this is kind of playing into that concept of wanting to draw the eye downwards and really increase that vertical line so that my legs look longer. I also just think it is really elevated and chic without putting in any of the effort and I'm all about that effortless life when it comes to getting dressed and styling my outfits. Now I actually thought it was interesting because I'm, I'm not bothered whether the trousers have a fixed waistband or an elasticated waistband or if they have a fixed waistband in the summertime in particular I really want to be wearing my trousers with a belt. The reason being that because there is so few elements in your outfits this is something that will help add in that little styled touch especially if it is in a textured leather. So I have a really nice one. It's this one here from Anderson's which I will always recommend. It has this nice little touch of shine and really elevated a lot of my more basic summer outfits. So let's move on to an accessory and talk about my most worn bag which I think was tied between these two here. The Karen Walker perforated bag and then also the Claude bag from Cezanne which is in this lovely little saddle shape. And you'll be able to see that there is a common denominator between the two. They look textured and kind of just drawing on what I was mentioning before, this is a great way to add in that element of visual interest to your outfit without doing any work. Also, they're both crossbody, and again, that's drawing in on the lines that we're creating in our body. I would tend to wear these across the body as well, so I'm kind of trying to think about how I can utilize other accessories as my third piece because most of the time I was just wearing a singlet and then shorts, a skirt or trousers. The other thing that I noticed that I was kind of looking for in these bags besides the fact that they were textured and that they were crossbody is that they had to be more of a small to medium size. I don't tend to carry a lot of things with me every single day. My phone, my card holder, some sunglasses, a lip balm, keys. That is kind of the extent of it and usually I would take a backpack if I've got the kids though now I've got my made well bucket tote I'm kind of using that a lot but on a daily basis this is kind of the perfect size for me fits everything and I do especially like the fact that this one here does have the closure another really great alternative which is a recent addition to my wardrobe is the quince pouch bag in the textured woven leather I think that is also a really nice kind of option and affordable too. My most worn shorts if you've been around here for a while you already know what they're going to be they are the Everlane a-line denim shorts and I just adore these. I have them in the faded black and also the blue but I've owned them in more colors in the past. These are just the two that I tend to gravitate towards the most so I decided to hang on to them so I could wear them even more but they are just such a great fit. Pinched in at the waist and then they have kind of a wider flared A-line fit through the leg and that kind of draws in on what it is that I look for in a short for the summer. It needs to be not super short so I don't want to see my bum cheeks kind of poking out the back. They need to have a couple of inches on the inseam and then also they need to be cut wide around the leg and actually this tends to make your legs look longer. It also makes your legs look leaner as well if that is something that you're trying to achieve with your shorts. I also just find it's so much more comfortable especially if you've got young kids. One, not too short. Two, wide leg opening. I also prefer it when they are a little bit more fitted at the waist but whether or not they're fitted over the hips is not the thing that is important to me and I think it's really evident in a pair of shorts which are also from Emmeline that I recently added um, and I wanted to highlight these because I think that these are a great alternative and they have all those same features so they have an elasticated waistband so they're cinched in at the waist and they're really really wide for the leg opening and just very very comfortable sort of a fabric they're not kind of pinching in the body anywhere and uh, I think they give that same sort of a casual look I can achieve the same vibe with these as I could with the denim shorts these are just going to be that little bit more comfortable especially if you're someone who doesn't love to wear denim shorts in the summer ones that don't have stretch so my most worn skirt was a tie between my Goelia trouser skirt which is currently in the wash because I'm still wearing it now. It's kind of the perfect year-round skirt for me. And then also this nylon balloon skirt which is from Tibby. And when I look at the two of them 
side by side one. They're both kind of longer skirt, which is really interesting to me because you'd think I'd want a mini, but when you have young children, you're kind of bending over a lot. So you want something that has a bit more length and a little bit more modesty to it. So that was kind of one of my criteria when it came to getting dressed in the morning. The second thing was ease of care. So how effortlessly can I look after the item? Can I easily just throw it into the wash and then not worry about it, not think about it again? And that is true of both of these pieces. And that is kind of the two core criteria for me. I suppose suppose the other thing is also the color because when you look at the two pieces side by side they're both well one's black and this one is a really dark French navy it looks almost black and it's probably coming off almost black on camera here too and I'm a really practical person and I'm conscious of the fact that my kids often have kind of food or something on their fingers and then they tug at my skirt or my trousers and they get them dirty. So I'm usually throwing things in the wash saying they've worn it and knowing that they're going to come out looking fresh and like new black or a dark color is usually a good option. Also I like it when there's a pocket as well. Most worn shoes were some kind of dainty sandal either with a fine strap or that I could just slip on the foot. Now I have to admit, since having two kids, my YSL tribute sandals are nowhere near as comfortable as they used to be, and actually I tend to get blisters most times that I wear these if I'm doing quite a bit of walking or I'm walking really fast. But I wanted to share them as something that I tend to look out for when it comes to sandals for the summertime, because I really, really love the design and the silhouette of these shoes. I actually end up wearing these ones from Air Label a lot, and these have this very kind of dainty, strappy nature to them. I have a similar pair from AD. There's, there's these are a dupe for the bare sandals from the row and I will say I really really love these but if you have young kids word of warning if they step on one of the straps then it may end up breaking and I actually had that happen to both my 80 sandals and these ones I took them both for the cobbler to get them repaired uh, but it's just one of those things you need to be mindful I think that's probably why so many mums end up loving wearing a really chunky sandal I completely understand I actually have something that I've recently added to my closet from Vivaya and they are in this kind of snake print. They've got two straps and they're reasonably thick straps, kind of cushy insole and I think those are going to be ones that I end up wearing a lot this spring summer coming up uh, because I like the snake print. It is a neutral but it also feels like it adds in this little pop, this little pattern to my outfits. Now things that I tend to look for, as I said, I like really dainty straps. I like a shoe that has a bit more of a slimmer profile to it, but still is able to contain my wider foot. I'm not too fussed about the actual shape of the sole, but I think there is a commonality between the styles that I wore the most and they all had a slightly squared off toe, which is really interesting now that I think about it. I'm also looking for shoes that do not have an ankle strap. So they can have straps across the foot, but not at the ankle. The reason being that that will cut you off visually and it's going to stunt the length of your legs. Someone who already does have shorter legs, that is a no-go for me. I did recently buy a pair from Madewell. They haven't arrived yet, but they are in this kind of stamped textured python. I'm going to put a little photo on screen because I think they really fulfill those specs that I was mentioning. Then the final item is the most worn dress and really it has to go to my Pippa dress from Cezanne. This is one that I recommend all the time. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in my top 10 pieces to buy from Cezanne. I'm going to link that up in the cards. It's one that I've shared with my styling clients. I just think that this is such a beautiful dress which looks great on so many different body shapes. I would recommend sizing down on this. I've got the small and I think the extra small would be better on me just because it isn't really fitted anywhere and when you look at it on the model it kind of looks like it's designed to be a little bit more fitted. But when I think about the details of what I look for in a summer dress, one, again, it's going to be length. Similar to skirts, I want something that is a little bit longer. I will occasionally do a mini, but for now, this season of my life, I'm finding longer skirts work better. Two, it needs to have some sort of interesting design detail. So this one here has this knotted effect here at the waist, which causes this beautiful ruched effect, which I really, really love. I have a dress from Tevi, which is in a nylon, and that one has this kind of cutout detail, this asymmetrical strap detail at the back. I just think that's really fun, especially with the pocket placement. And then the other one that I shared in the cutaways is from Quince. And this one has kind of like this very dramatic sort of a shape, I feel like, especially with the empire waist. The other thing that I'm looking out for is, again, how easily can I launder this piece? Because usually it's going to be a one and done, I throw it on, and then I'm going to have to wash it after every wear. So that is another really important aspect for me. I'm not too bothered about sleeves, sleeveless, either or is fine for me, but it does need to be in a fabrication that I feel really comfortable wearing in the summer as well. 
So that wraps up my most worn pieces for summer. As mentioned, you can find out more about my autumn most worn over on my Substack. Link down in the description box below and all of the items that I shared and that were featured in the cutaways will also be linked down there too. If you are new here, I would love for you to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help me with the YouTube algorithm and I will see you next week with another styling video. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful week ahead and I will see you soon. Bye.